In a lot of your college classes, your professors are asking you to only use information that is scholarly or peer-reviewed or credible, but they don't tell you what that means or how to find this type of information. That's where the library comes in. A lot of the sources you may be searching already have ways to limit what you find to just the stuff that's best for including in research papers. So, what does scholarly mean? Let's talk about it in terms of scholarly versus popular. A scholarly source is usually not very exciting to look at, no flashy colors or exciting pictures, and the title is generally complex. Popular sources are designed to grab your attention and usually have short titles that are easy to pronounce. Scholarly journal sources are generally long, more than five pages, and they have reference lists. Popular sources are shorter and rarely have any references listed. It boils down to, can you get an issue at the grocery store or a bookstore? If the answer is yes, it's more likely to be popular. If the answer is no, it's more likely to be scholarly. Your professors just don't want you using People magazine, at least not without some scholarly sources thrown in. Many, but not all, scholarly journals are peer-reviewed. That means that before an article is published in a journal, it is reviewed by other experts in the field. They make suggestions, look for bias and errors in the science, and then the author makes the needed changes before their article gets published. The ultimate goal of peer review is to make sure only the best of the best research is published. Some professors specifically ask you to find peer-reviewed journals. A few of the library databases make this easy to find by having a handy little peer review button you can click when running your search. The library also has a database called Ulrichs. This only has information about journals, totally boring, unless you need to know if a particular journal is peer-reviewed. Then, you just need to type the name of the journal into the search box and look either for the word refereed or look for the little referee uniform. That means that the journal is peer-reviewed. So, how can you determine if a journal is peer-reviewed? Some of the databases we have here at the ISU Library will allow you to limit your search to just peer-reviewed journals. Handy! To do this, go to the Quick Articles tab on the front page of the library. Perform your search, and then look for the checkbox that says Scholarly or Peer-Reviewed. Check the box, and now most of the journals should be from peer-reviewed or scholarly sources. Almost all of our EBSCO databases have the ability to search for just peer-reviewed. Look for the checkbox either on the left-hand side of the screen after you run your search, or down here at the bottom before you start searching. Ulrichs is the next option you can use when searching for peer-reviewed journals. First thing you need to do is look for the journal name in the citation. So I'll look at this citation, and we're looking for the source or the journal name, not the article title. The article title's up at the top, the journal name will be listed right here. So I'm going to copy the journal title, then I'm going to go back to the library's home page. I'm going to go to Library Quick Links, go to Databases Alphabetic, and then we're going to jump down to the U's and look for Ulrich's Web. Once you're in Ulrich's Web, you just paste the title of the journal and search. If you see the referee uniform next to the journal name, or if you see that next to the word refereed it says yes, that means that this journal is peer-reviewed. Note, just because a journal is peer-reviewed doesn't mean that every single item in it is peer-reviewed. There may be editorials and opinion pieces, but these are generally clearly marked. Well, what about websites? These can be scholarly or popular, too. There is a terrible acronym to help you evaluate websites to see if they're credible or not. It's called CRAP. I know. Well, at least you won't forget it. And even though this was designed for websites, you can use the same acronym to help you evaluate books and journal articles, too. So the C stands for currency. This is talking about how recent a resource was published. Generally, more recent equals better, especially for those of you in health sciences. If you're a history major or studying 18th century literature, then it's not a big deal if the resources you use are 50 years old. But health sciences students should not generally be referencing works from the 1960s. So how do you determine the currency of a resource? This is one of the easiest to figure out, especially for a book or journal article. Just look at the publication date. This can be harder to find on a website. Look for other clues, like a last updated date. Also, broken links are an indication that a website may not be kept current. The R stands for relevance, which is asking you to figure out if the resource is relevant to your research needs. 
This is an overly complicated thing to figure out. If your topic is how to prevent burnout in nurses, an article on online teaching strategies is obviously not relevant, but there are a few subtle distinctions. Ask yourself, does this information answer my research question? Is it too narrowly focused or is it too broad? Both of those sides will have some value, but you really want the resource that is just right. Also ask yourself, who is the intended audience for this information? Is this article written to be read by physics professors, or is it written for high school students? You generally can tell this by where something's published and the kind of language they use. The first A refers to the author or responsible party for a resource. This is usually not too difficult to find in books and journal articles. The authors are generally listed right there, but authors on websites can be tricky to find. And it's more than just finding a name, it's also determining if this person or organization is a knowledgeable source. I would not be an authoritative source to write about brain surgery or rocket science, but I can write about library issues because that's my education and background. So when you're trying to figure out the authority, you need to ask yourself, is this author a person, a company, or an organization? Is the author an expert on the topic? Look for their affiliation or information about their educational background. Sometimes you just have to Google their name if this information is not provided. Is contact information included? Can you find an email or physical address for the author? And what does the URL say? A .com indicates commercial, while a .edu means this site is hosted by a college or university. The second A stands for accuracy, and this refers to the reliability, truthfulness, and correctness of information. This can be tricky, especially when you're new to a particular topic because you might not know what is or isn't accurate. Answering these questions can help. Is the information supported by evidence? Does the source cite other research? Is the research current and published in well-known journals? Can you verify the information? If you see the same facts published in many reputable sources, it's more likely to be accurate information. Has the information been peer-reviewed? And is the language unbiased? Phrases like, what the government doesn't want you to know are obviously signs of bias, but it can be much more subtle. Look for words like always and never. Most everything in life is in shades of gray. Also, be aware of your own perspective, especially when the bias is something you agree with or if it supports your research. Finally, are there spelling, grammatical errors, or other typos? That might be a sign that it's not a great source. And finally, the P stands for purpose. Why was this information created? Was it to educate and inform? Was it to persuade, convince, or even scare? Sometimes this can be very subtle. The author should make their intentions clear, but they don't always do so. I strongly encourage you to go out and find a few of the crap worksheets. They can be super helpful when working through resources. Being able to critically evaluate the information you find is more important than ever. There is just so much out there and a lot of it is garbage. You need to be able to look at what you find and ask some hard questions, with help from our crap acronym, of course. This is going to be hardest when the website, book, article, or whatever confirms what you already think. That's bias. Watch it. So just be cautious and make sure you don't limit your search to just the sources that agree with you. I know. I have a hard time with this too. Do your best to be logical, not emotional, when doing scholarly research. It's what Spock would do. If you have any questions about what makes a source scholarly, how to find peer-reviewed information, or what makes a source credible, feel free to contact any of the librarians at our three campuses.